Are these food claims all talk and no game? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. You don't have to love a catchy jingle for it to get stuck in your head. As long nope. as it gets stuck, the damage is done. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. The damage has been done. See, but it also doesn't have to be true because sometimes brands promise more in their jingles and slogans than they can actually deliver. Mm -hmm. So today, we're gonna find out which slogans you can trust and which ones you can't. It's time for Testing Product Claims, featuring the Slogan Sergeants. That's us, hey. the Slogan Sergeants. All right, we've gotten our hands on some well-known food products, and we're gonna see if their famous slogans hold up in a court of taste. And if the claim proves to be true, we're gonna officially call it bona fide. but mm -hmm. if it's just a disgusting case of false advertising, we're gonna call it total lies and demand they change it. We're gonna call the number on the package. Let's get to work, Sergeant. All right, we're starting off with a good old cup of joe, question mark, with Maxwell House Coffee, and their slogan is pretty sure of itself, good to the last drop. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, apparently it does. Ring a bell, boy, <laughs> back. <laughs> okay, Maxwell House has maintained this claim for decades, as you can yeah, see from this commercial. Still on there. Back in 1979. Maxwell House is coffee you can count on. Oh, yeah, is that you? Maxwell House. <laughs> Good to the last drop. Oh, there was a very little musicality in that. No. Is that a fake old lady? Everybody's happy. Even that guy served by his nurse. A nurse? <laughs> no. Good coffee. Oh, where, where, I'm a nurse. I don't understand. No, she's not. No, she wasn't a nurse. She was like, it was, she was like a food service oh. worker. And I don't know what the context was. Ah, uh, the 79. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We uh, have a nice coffee maker and we don't put this stuff in it. But if we did, I would have to say, good coffee every yeah. time I gave it to you. Or not. Or you gave it to me. I'll tell you right now, just you handling that thing, it smells good. I, I mean, like I'm just, just the smell of coffee. It just, it smells good to All me. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna do this in this fancy schmanciest way possible. We're gonna do a pour over. Now this is not nearly as, uh, good of a jingle as Folgers. The best part of waking up. And Folgers has gotta be Maxwell House's number one competitor, right? I mean, they're, they're competing against each other because it's instant coffee. We have droppers, but you gotta make a whole cup because it's not good at the last drop, it's good to the last drop. There is a go. scooper in here. Uh, the way that your finger, I usually like to get a scooper to find the yeah, scooper. Yeah. It's not that day though. Give me a couple. You want a couple of tablespoons? That yeah, that's about right. I mean, in the age of Starbucks, you know, since 1892, the fact that this is still around. But do you know how much coffee you can make for yourself with this? And it probably costs, I mean, that's less than 10 bucks for this whole thing, probably. Whoop. First of all, I gotta hit. Go the, slow, go slow. I'm trying to go slow. Trevor told me to go slow, but you didn't tell me how hard it was to go slow! <laughs> I've seen people do this. That. He doesn't have anger issues. Okay. You, you, here, they're, you bring, they're, they're bringing in uh, you give it a shot, paper towels for you. See if you can go slow. I don't think I can. I think it's a, I think it's a faulty. Uh... Oh. You, see, you're going pretty aggressively. Look at that clear liquid that's coming through. See, you're not even hitting the coffee grounds, man. No, you want to go on the side. But your coffee grounds are floating. Yo, they'll get... It's not going to be good to the last. That's you're making a lot of coffee too. They'll get got. I mean, it looks darker, is this I think, on you, camera than it does in the room. Is this how you're supposed to make it? Yeah, I mean, it's coffee. You, this is kinda, you put the beans and then you put the water and that's kinda it. One tablespoon of coffee plus six ounces of water, but it does say brewing instructions. Okay, yeah, so we are brewing. Okay, and then you give it a nice tap. You made a lot more than me. I want mine a little bit stronger. I'm taking this off and putting it over there. You're only gonna drink the last drop? No, I'm gonna get down to the last few swallows. I don't like Maxwell House without the fighting chance of a little half and half. Well, it's coffee! Sink it. Sink it. Now don't drink that last drop or you're gonna have to start all over. Well, in order to be good to the last drop, does it have to be good at the first taste? <laughs> it's not good before the last drop. Right. So could it get better closer to the last drop? You know, I don't drink a lot of coffee now, so this is probably much worse for you than it is for me because it's just it's horrible. Just the coffee suggestion is something that I get excited about. So this isn't horrible. Let me get down to the very end though. 
I wouldn't say it tastes like something that's not even coffee. It just tastes like bland, boring, bottom of the barrel coffee. Okay, I've got some drops here. I'll let, I'll let you get to that point. That's about how much I've left. This is very precise. This is very precise. You got your dropper here. I think I here. got like, I don't know, I think I've got like seven drops in there. Well, that's not all the drops. I got it. All right. So, all right. Oh, that's it. I've sucked that's up the everything. Full, that's the full last drop right there. Two drops. Not great. No. <laughs> kind of like the same as everything else except not quite as hot as the first drop. Well, I, what I will say is when you have it in that small of an amount, you kind of forget how bad it is. Well, you know so every morning like, how I eat my smoothies. With a spoonful at the time? Right, but what I'm saying is, is if, if I did this at a drop at a time. If you're gonna enjoy Maxwell House coffee and you don't wanna understand how bad it tastes, then what you can do is you just get a dropper and do one drop at a time and you'll probably be inoculated. So you're saying it might be bona fide if it's good to the last drop if you've only been drinking it one drop at a time. Yeah. But that's not what they're saying. So I say, total lies! Since the 1940s, M&Ms have been claiming to be the candy that melts in your mouth, not in your hand. <laughs> oh, that, that rung a bell. <laughs> yeah. Quite early, actually. Yeah, I mean, right before even the we The slogan finished, wasn't even finished, right, right, and the bell but, was already rung. Uh, but because the melts bell in your mouth, getting, oh, I know yeah, what the you're bell starts say. getting rung. Not, you thought it was melting your hand. I thought it was not in your hand because- But it's hand. I usually put them in just a hand. Oh, we're gonna, okay. We gotta keep that in mind now, for our test. Founder Forrest Mars got the idea for these after seeing soldiers eat chocolates coated in hard candy shells that could easily be transported and wouldn't melt in the process. Oh, so this is really functional. No more poking. That's that's like the Pillsbury thing. We may have to test that. In when I say process, episode. I have to poke you. No, Don't you remember? No, no. Let's take a look at an Eminem commercial from the 1950s. Question. Yes? What's the best chocolate candy when you're all dressed up? For hint. Is that a uh, no birthday party? Mess. There's no chocolate mess. Best yep. chocolate this is a game. candy when you're on the go. Oh, kids driving a car. Best chocolate candy to be found anywhere around. Yeah, yeah. under a basketball no chocolate mess. Answer, M&M's chocolate candy. Okay, the I knew that The milk chocolate coming. melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Oh. So hey. there's no chocolate mess. Remember, no chocolate mess at home. They said hand. Or away, at work, or at play. Because the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, mouth not, not in your, your hand. hand. Get M&M's plain and peanut chocolate candies. So it was hand. Yeah. Okay. Well, but All right, Michaela and Chase, come on in and bring in your, your situation. Now, Give them a little room, right? Now, what I will say, first of all, I can't open them, but I'm in, I'm, I've always wanted to figure this out. Can I get out? some scissors? Because I ripped them on both sides and it did not open. <laughs> what, you know, you ever seen Chase open an apple? I know your, I know your hands are cold. Do we have any knives? Do we have any scissors? Just rip that open like yeah. an apple. You can do it. Okay, I'm ready for when that doesn't work. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> M&Ms are not, now, let me just say quickly while we break these open. It is not on the bag, and the slogan is nowhere to be found on the website. So mm -hmm. the argument could be made that they realized that this was false and they have abandoned it. But we're about to find out, or maybe and they're we, just like, it's time to come up with something new. And we wanna be thorough, so we're gonna represent uh, your hand as a sample hand, my hand as a sample hand. A mildly, like a mildly sweaty hand. And Chase is gonna represent like, extremely cold hands. Yes. Maybe some Antarctic hands. And then Michaela here is gonna uh, represent some hot extremely hands. hot hands. Really, really, really hot. Cause you've got uh, mitten warmers inside of here, right? Yes, I'm kind of yeah. sweating actually. So your hands right are super hot. <laughs> okay, but we also want you to put M&Ms in your mouth as a con the control mouth. Right. right. So sure if that's gonna mouth. happen. So I'm just gonna, I'll, you know, I'm gonna give some in your hand. You can do whatever ratio you want. Okay. okay. I mean, that, I, do, an, do an amount that you can still close your hand in. Yeah, feel free to. Well, that's a hot hand. It's hot. <laughs> feel free to dis. Go to Vegas, you know? Yeah. <laughs> those are some. Those are big some money, big hands. money. They are some cold hands. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, so take, take some into your mouth. As soldiers would. And now close your hand and let's start a timer. We'll, we'll determine how long that timer needs to go. Um, I guess now. So you so you're closed up. It's so hard for me to put things in my mouth <laughs> and not immediately not eat them. These I know. Don't chew. <laughs> I chewed. Oh, you already. No, chewed? that's right. I was like, you put some in my mouth. I'm gonna start. You, you, mm -hmm. you I need, need more. more. I need more. 
I do. Hey, listen, I understand. I almost okay. bit down on these suckers. I, I was like, <laughs> oh, and then I stopped. My whole cheeked up M&Ms right now have completely dissolved, and the candy is like. Yeah. Let me see. There's a little bit of candy still left. Oh. You only have one in there? No, I got at least seven. <laughs> I just pulled one out. Mine are here. starting to melt. I'm pulling, the, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, but why is it shaking so much? Who holds candy for more than five minutes for any reason? Just in your bare hands? Yeah. Right. A child? See, okay. Oh, like, why would yeah. a child hold candy for I used to be a nanny and they just used to hold stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they, no nannies. No reason. We're, on, on a, we're already at three time. minutes. Yeah, now. they just, just hold things. Stuff. <laughs> right. Let's go to five minutes, ninth round number. It, it works. It works. It's a, it's a lower limit for the nannies, it's an upper limit for soldiers and everybody else. Do you feel like they're melting? Well, my mouth, yeah. my mouth is, they're totally melted. They're I'm just totally gonna start swallowing. Mm -hmm. mm. I started swallowing, so they're pretty much. You don't like M&M's, man? I like them when I don't chew them. As long as there's no mm. chocolate residue on our skin, then we're saying this is a bona fide claim. And I'm very hopeful at this point. I'm not moving around too much, but I feel like. You should shake it a little bit. I feel like this is gonna, this is gonna hold up. All right, we're at, we're at five minutes. All right. Okay, Let's Chase, see. reveal. Oh. Ooh. So you got to move them around. Very Is there any chocolate? Hand. I see a little hint of chocolate on that yellow one that's broken through. But, but I think that was broken hand. through before you started. When Scrape you, yeah. it on I'm the table. And just and let's see your hand. Any chocolate on your hand? No uh, chocolate. That's a that's a cool looking so. hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No chocolate. Rhett, let's go. And that was next. a cold hand. So now this we're testing hand. super sweaty hands, which yeah, is yeah. Mr. McLaughlin. I think I've got pretty hot hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Now, that's not chocolate. That's just brown M&M. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got some brown. So far, so good. All right. I'm going to go for it. I was squeezing hard because I have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hardly have any. I guess I was squeezing hardest with the fingertips. I had two brown ones that were right there. That's not chocolate. Okay. This is bona fide. And Michaela, okay. hot hands. Oh. Wow, even God. in the hot hands. Yeah, no chocolate. Okay. Strategically, chocolate. yeah. There's, uh, there, this listen. Is, That's pretty. This is freaking impressive. I mean, somebody come in and ring a freaking bell. This is amazing. Because it seems bona fide. Hey, <laughs> so not only is this bona fide, but <laughs> You got to put it back on the bag because I mean this is transformative. I thought they, I thought our, our our ring a bell boy was holding some in his hand. So I was holding these M and M's the whole time. Oh boy! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all red How? in your hand. There's you since only, the beginning of the show. Since the beginning. Why are they all red? Because <laughs> you're the bell boy. <laughs> it matches my slough, slough those off. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Oh my yeah. gosh! There's no chocolate. Now, but uh, let's talk in 30 minutes? Yes, 30 minutes. The thing, here's the David thing. David Hill been holding these in hand for 30 minutes. Here, here's the thing though, Link. <laughs> That's not a cool hand though. I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, having this candy all over your hand is not something that you want, but the chocolate is still intact. So, amazing. I think we gotta say, melt in your mouth, not in your hand. Bonafide. Bonafide. You know, this mug, this season's mug celebrates 10 years of mythicality with the OG logo on one side and a commemorative logo on the other. Ooh. Now, it's got that throwback orange and black color scheme that y'all love. Uh -huh. uh, and you can get your very own at mythical.com. Drink nostalgia. That's our slogan now. Oh. All right. But of course, Subway's slogan, do you know it? Eat fresh definitely rings a bell. <laughs> Caught your red hand. He's so aggressive with the bell sometimes that you can, the thing is spinning around inside the bell. Okay, so what we did was we ordered this oven roasted turkey sandwich within the hour mm -hmm. from Subway and according to their website, it's full of flavor and made to order with your choice of crisp yep. veggies yep. served on our freshly baked hearty multigrain bread. And of course, what we're gonna be testing the sandwich against is some fresh ingredients. Everything that's represented here is also on the sandwich, including that bread. So, these were sourced from a farmer's market very recently, uh, and then a deli, we got the cheese and the meat. And the Hold on, Trevor, you didn't meat. go into the fields for this? No, sir. Okay, close enough though. Farmer's market, fresh enough, looks pretty good. It, it says eat fresh here, but it also says mayo. And then right here it says, 
baller. Oh yeah, that's so how you should really be pushing. Th they're they're working on uh, you know hedging their bets with baller as a new slogan. Apparently, I see that they've done me a solid. Yeah, you and take. I'll take the tomato side. Going with here. the tomato list side. If it comes down to the tomatoes. Then Link is just going to be left out in the cold. You want to start with the what? Let's just go through the layers that are on the sandwich itself. Okay, you want to start starting with the bread. Yeah, so let's start with the bread. Just taking a little, a little pinch. And hand me that baguette. It's got that Subway spongy. It was hard to pinch it. Oh man. All right. I don't, I, I like this bread better, hand. but I don't think that Subway's bread is not fresh. No, there's nothing hardened about it. It's actually very, it's softer than the baguette. Yeah, because it's more of a Which a implies thing. more freshness. I think it is, it is uh, met or exceeded the threshold. That passes the test. What's next? Turkey is what I got on top here. Yep, I got some turkey, turkey, turkey. I mean, that's a good looking turkey. I mean, uh, Subway not a sponsor, so. Again, there's a slightly different flavor profile to these turkeys. But like, but the one is not more, more fresh than the The floppiness, other. the, I don't know what, what, what makes turkey fresh. I think it's floppiness. You don't want it to have rigor mortis. I think it's gonna come down to the vegetables, which they claimed were crisp. How about just grab a piece of lettuce? Spinach or lettuce? Well, we're gonna have to get to both. Okay, now we do have a slight floppiness here. You're going spinach? Okay. Yeah. I'm and going lettuce. You're going lettuce. Okay, the lettuce is- I got a nice crunch from the Subway. The lettuce is not hitting it as hard as, as the fresh lettuce. I mean, the, the spinach is crunchier on the Subway than from the farmer's market. Now there's a floppiness to the, to the Subway cucumber, as you can see, but I believe that it is simply oh, yeah. cut Look thickness. At that. It might just be cut thickness. No, it looks to be the same thickness. So the floppiness to me, you don't have the taut, the taut cumber there. Yeah, okay. The cucumbers could be crisper. That's the only thing so far. And then uh, red onions. Again, we got a lot more flop, but there's a lot more length too. Equal to me. Equal to me. But we also have tomatoes, which I know you're not gonna be a part of this part. And I will go on to the thinly sliced green pepper, which I think flop doesn't matter there. But taste? That took more time than it needed to, but after testing every single ingredient from a Subway sandwich, we gotta say, Subway, eat fresh. Bonafide. No, oh, good work. So M and M's and Subway were true to their word, and Maxwell House is a bunch of liars. That don't listen to those Maxwell House nurses, y'all. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. <laughs> I'm Sam. And I'm Ryan. We're from Niagara Falls, Canada. And we're having a drive-in in the backyard. <laughs> and it's, and it's time, time to spin, spin the, the wheel, wheel of mythicality. mythicality. <laughs> Look at that. We're big in Canada. Thank in you. their backyard. Thank you for enjoying us in your backyard. Click the top link to watch us guess the words missing from crazy warning labels in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land, get the commemorative GMM 10th anniversary mug now at mythical.com.